Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dustin. I have another episode for you, uh, Bushwhack and Tartaria. And today, tailing off of my friend John Levi, who so graciously hooked me up on a drop this morning, as he usually does on Sunday, but um, inspired me to get out here at the Peace Bridge, the Bird Island Pier, for another rollerblade on the ground edition of Bushwhack and Tartaria. So let's get right into it. I'm here. I have pictures. Actually, we'll give you some previews of what we got going on here today. We're going to go over the um, old maps, like what John was talking about. I'll show you a clip of what of John's video. I'll show you another clip of the water intake carriage that he referenced. And we'll go over, I got some blank things to pages to do some searching. We're going to do some hip fire. And I have some old articles also to reference and old pictures of this place. Also some anomalous stuff going on. Yeah, I already got some, got some more boots on the ground for you here. I'm down at the Porter Station right there. Okay, so we have some, note that stack there. I have some other anomalous stuff to show you guys. Watch this. Powerhouse Buffalo, Electric Street Railway. Does that building look familiar? Keep it in mind. Bushwhack and Tartaria. Bird Island Pier, tailing off of John Levi. Here we go. Okay, let's get me a little bit more in the field of view. Now, I start off with this because we have an electric street railway, and this building looks awfully familiar to what John referenced earlier today, which is... So this is where we're at in Buffalo. Same exact area that John was talking about. Okay. That's the intake carriage number one. Okay. Now, this is the Massachusetts Ave pumping station. I believe there is a tunnel from here to here. These two objects, as well as a tunnel from the Massachusetts Ave pumping station right here to the Colonel Ave, or the Colonel Francis Ward pumping station right here. And as is, there's an, another tunnel out to the intake carriage. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it from Google Earth, but we're going to go over all that. And I have some anomalies here because we have these old maps that I like to refer to. 1888 map. All roads lead to Buffalo. Okay. This is the area we're talking about. International Bridge was already there. Let's look that up. International Bridge is a two span swing bridge carrying Stanford subdivision, Canadian Railway, Canadian National Railway across Niagara River. Originally built in 1873. So where do you see the current that I have here? And like like John said, 12, 13 miles an hour. They're laying caissons. I've done speculative work on caissons here in the past in Buffalo as far as the laying of the Peace Bridge. But John has a point when he says, um, how do they build this? at the time they did. So let's watch his a clip of his video right here and we'll go from there. And again I have pictures I mean rollerblades on the ground. I, I actually just you know bushwhacking. Actually somebody um asked me why my name is bushwhacking. Let's just do that. Okay so the activity of living or traveling in a wild or uncultivated country. 
participating in guerrilla warfare. Interesting definitions. Effectively, what it is is just getting out and doing either fishing or looking at this type of stuff, architecture, as I pass by it. I'm kind of flying off the cuff with my research with these videos, and that's why I called it bushwhacking. So i seen a comment that asked that, and i like to like to answer it. So there you go. And again, yes, I do have pictures. We were at the Jubilee today also. Check this out. There go them placards again, guys. Jubilee Springs. Here, I'll do this. I've been there before, and I have a Jubilee uh, video out. Oh, let's see where my videos are. I can go watch it. There it is right there. Bushwhacking Tartaria, episode number nine. I was already there. Okay, and I was just driving by, and I see these placards. I'm going to get out and take pictures of them, log them, and, uh, yeah, Jubilee. Notice how the uh, U shaped as a V. Notice the two pillars. And I believe there's a placard also that I get. Okay, erected for the Jubilee Water. Commissioners of the parish tracked by the Bureau of Building, Department of Public Works, Frank X. Argus. No date on this thing, huh? Interesting. But that's not necessarily my main focus here. I just wanted to show you these pictures, though. That's the St. Francis. Did that a couple episodes ago. And just so fitting that I just fly off the cuff and drive down Niagara Street, stop in front of Jubilee, take pictures. I get back in the car and, well, look at where the sun is, right over the steeple that I've already done. Fitting. Beautiful, right? So, yeah, I got that for you. Let's listen to what John said. And uh, what you got? I call this Mud Flood Row. Look at, look at how these buildings are. Actually, I'll show you. Note the different foundation, of course. Different con, uh, construction styles indicate different cultures per Brian Forrester. So, very interesting. Let's see what John Levi's got to say. And then we'll get to, uh, oh wow, well, it didn't load in full. HD yet, but sorry about that. This is the drive down to the Bird Island Pier. Foot of Ferry, we call it, here in Buffalo. Thirty-six degrees out, fitting. Sorry if that's so grainy. I didn't wait long enough. Hopefully the other videos aren't that bad. Boy. Because I want you to be able to see how fast the flow of the water is. It's kind of important. But at least it shows you how I just drive up to it. It's fitting with the... So I've been here many times. The, that canal is obviously a, a section of the Erie Canal. And um, the West Side Rowing Club is down there. There's always rowers in this canal, rowing and rowing. Yeah, wow, you really can't see. It's pretty grainy. Gives you a general view of how beautiful the area is, though. Oh, you can see how fast it is, definitely. 12, 13 miles an hour is absolutely no joke it's one of the narrow narrowest part of the um, upper niagara uh, river between uh, buffalo and fort erie so there you go bird island pier and underground railroad river crossing and probably just for that same reason i just explained there it's just you know i wonder if there's an underground tunnel hey tubman there you go Three hundreds club, Buffalo, nineteen ninety six. Three hundreds club, nineteen ninety six. Hmm. 
But yeah, it is a beautiful area. And that water is moving to underline John Levi's point. I'm not sure we're even going to be able to see. I did take a picture of this. Both of them actually. Black Rock, or excuse me, Black Rock Ferry was an important crossing to Canada throughout the 19th century until operations in the 1949. Ferry going across that river. We'll eventually get to the picture of that so you can look at it. And hopefully, the well, the picture will be more. Now, there was an unfortunate incident here, right at this area, right there. This is what you call a little slack water because it's so powerful and it's so fast right there. And it's, you have a corner. It creates a kind of an eddy, if you will, right here. And um, again, there's unfortunate incident that happened there with two gentlemen quite a few years back. And um, it's on YouTube. You can look up Foot of Ferry accident. Also, a, a police officer who was doing scuba diving lessons actually uh, lost his life here as well too so um, if nothing else it goes to show how absolutely dangerous that water is so that's what we got there we go but let's hear what john levi says and thanks again sir here we go this is a water pumping station water pumping station on the border of the u.s and canada if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that we're in the city of Buffalo. This pumping station, in the middle of the water, with a current that averages 12 miles per hour, was built, we're told, in a couple years. And here we're told of this Colonel Francis Ward pumping station, and we're told about this water intake. It was built from 1908 to 1913, so five years and it facilitated 100 million gallons of drinking water per day derived from Lake Erie. It's situated about a mile offshore at the head and center of the Niagara River, where the water is normally 28 feet deep. And it seems like there were several of these water intakes. Did you hear that? 1908 to 1913. Okay, so let's go check out some maps that we have. This is an 1888 map, and does this look like a boat to you, or are they trying to hide something? Because John did the work there as far as the research goes when they built that crib. But this is a Buffalo map of Library of Congress, 1902. Hmm. Let's double check in on the actual map again. Keep in mind what John Levi just said. Okay. 1902 on the map. What's going on here? Okay. That's a crib. That's in the middle of the river. And note, note the actual slack water too goes is going the, the opposite way. Interesting to note. But uh, we're getting uh, choked off here by the uh, Erie Canal. I think that they were diverting a lot more water, guys. Now, here goes the water station that they're talking that he was talking about also the Massachusetts Ave one. And of course the Porter Ave station here in 1902 on this map in 1902 on this map, but on that picture guys pretty sure this powerhouse Buffalo Electric Street Railway is that building, okay? And we're going to keep that in mind for later and come back to that. Okay, so we're going to go back to John's Porter Ave Station. That's the Buffalo Water or the Colonel Ave Station. They, I've done a, a video on it before. And note how the tram line is here. This is what I'm interested in here. Okay, this is depicting a coal burning railway but meanwhile in this picture that i just showed you it's clearly saying if it's the same location which i i believe it is it's it's literally i mean what do you think guys
See that building? Okay. We're going to go back to... Now we got to... Remember the date that John said. We got this. Look at that building. Look at that stack. It does look awfully similar. What do you think, guys? I need your help on this one. They have an electric railway here. Okay. In the map, they're saying that it's coal one, and they're trying to hide that it's a big station. In the 1902 map, and it, the 1902 map also has the water crib. Now, I want to identify something here. When you zoom in, it looks like it's a little bit off on an angle. Try to pick, keep in mind that we're up high. This picture is taken from a fixed spot, probably from an airship. So it is right next to itself, or like, like the if the Peace Bridge was there at the time, it, it is perpendicular to the shoreline, effectively, these two. So in 1902, they have a map, Library of Congress, indicating that that crib is there. Let's track back. A hundred million gallons of drinking ocean in the middle of the water with a current that averages 12 miles per hour was built, we're told, in a couple years. And here we're told of this Colonel Francis Ward pumping station. And we're told about this water intake. It was built from 1908 to 1913. So five years. And it facilitated 100 million doesn't gallons make, of drinking make sense. water per day derived from Lake Erie. It's situated about a mile offshore at the head and center of the Niagara River, where the water is normally 28 feet deep. And it seems like there were several of these water intakes. I'm actually looking for another one right now, but this is a great example. So they're building these out in the water in 28 foot deep waters of massive megalithic seeming block, but more realistically concrete, and not, not a peep about diverting the river. The water intake is connected to the pumping station by a 12-foot tunnel, 6,000 plus feet in length. Gravy. We have another one, the Porter pumping station. And these stories are just fine, but without some kind of explanation as to how you're building in 25-foot waters with a strong current. And it's not like you're just building something. You're running a tunnel and connecting it to this pumping station way over here. And here's a look at one of these original water intakes from the Bird Island Pier. And in this photo... Check that. Your boy got inspired from John today and went there straight like that. And they try to block me off with a fence, but you can't stop a berserker in Buffalo. What a beautiful place like this. Keep it going, John. But we can see what look like some massive blocks, and typically piers are built. Oh, where do you see this? Got some gravy for you guys. They, there was an accident with the ice, okay? Happens from, t from time to time. Knocks the pier off its moorings if you will, and I got some blocks for you, John. And a ladder for you, UAP. Mortar in there, but uh, certainly not the, the stone of the pregnant lady, Cam. <laughs> but uh, yeah, of course we got a ladder there. Probably for maintenance assessment, but uh, sometimes the boom breaks. From remains of the old world. And here, we can see this intake back here in the distance. And here's a look at some of the machinery associated with this pumping station. 20 foot fly. Now, I believe this pumping station is the Massachusetts Ave pumping station. Not this one. I believe the one that has those massive flywheels is this nondescript. Very unassuming building right here. And it is the Massachusetts Ave pumping station. 
Okay, that which is linked to the crib. In a 1902 map. Library of Congress, guys. What's going on here, okay? Let's finish what John's saying. My wheels, weighing 30 tons each. Just to give you an idea, these things that they're blasting out in less than five years. And is this the true story, or are we looking at inherited infrastructure? brought back to life. And here this guy on Reddit says, I've always had questions about the thing underneath the Peace Bridge. It kind of looks like a sunken ship with its nose sticking out. I've always thought the same thing. I've drove by it my entire life. As a child, I drove by it going to school on a, on a yellow cheese. And I, it always fascinated me, the fact that I could just stand there as a sentinel in water with constant water erosion being magnified with a 12 mile an hour current, just so steadfast. Now I'm gonna sh I'm gonna illustrate something else here, because I do think they possibly could have built the round carriage out in that uh, a mile offshore, the uh, the one that's connected to the Francis Ward pumping station at the foot of Porter. Francis Ward is the same as the Porter station. Let me identify that. The foot of Porter is where the pumping station is. I have boots on the ground of that. We're gonna get into. Matter, matter of fact, let's show that right now. Here goes your boy. Now they're doing work here. I was here a couple um, weeks ago, actually. I've had this sitting on the back burner. There goes a peace bridge in the background. And uh, these dudes were doing some heavy, uh, heavy lifting here, heavy, heavy equipment uh, work. Now these things are caps to tunnels, I believe. They're at Tiff Farm also. They're not really rocks. Now you see how the ice comes up? That's the Bird Island Pier out there. You see how the waves are breaking over that pier? That's effectively what happens when it knocks the pier apart. And I got boots on the earth, you know, blades on the ground for you. Stick with me, please. So you can walk out to a certain point of the pier, and then it stops and goes into a concrete port thing, that which we're looking at right now. But I've been on that thing, walking out on it with my buddies during the summer uh, to fish. It's kind of a pain in the you-know-what because it's un obviously undulating up and down and it's a lot of it's broke up. Okay, there's that. There's the, there's the intake carriage crib and we're gonna I'm going to show you a video on that that I shared in my community tab of my YouTube uh, channel. And that it's going to illustrate, number one, a very interesting thing about a, a hue, a, a, a color. See those um, things? That's what they're driving in over there, these guys. Um, and something about... Uh, the the location of the actual round intake crib and why I think that it was possibly able to be to be built there with caissons, but I question the Peace Bridge caisson. I question the first intake cr crib that John did. There's no footage of it, guys. It's in the 1902 Congress map I showed you. But there's a lot of waterworks here in Buffalo. We're clearly surrounded by water. There's a radial street pattern that I think was probably lined up with the sunset. I'm gonna try to illustrate that here in the next couple of videos. And I really appreciate, again, my homie John Levi for uh, teeing me up real nice for this one. I'm also gonna try to incorporate some help from others. And I need your guys' help too. Uh, my MeWe uh, contributors, Muddy May, Kaloum, you know, Campbell, everybody else. I need to try to, these guys were like, what's this dude doing? That one dude was a beast though, he didn't have any, it was cold, extremely cold, I was getting soaking wet. I, I'm gonna ask for your help at the end, so I gotta remind myself. Because there's a skip, there's schematics that I found of this place, that this ward pumping station right here, with uh, blueprints of the ground layout and it shows the tunnels going to each other. And I could not find that at all. So that was boots on the ground 
at the war pumping station that he was talking about. Here's a photo. And this is actually a poor photo, but he does have a point with his little silhouette. And here's a nice picture of it. And perhaps the yeah, water got spilled these nice in pictures too. this way, funneling it. I have a hard time. He said it was built from 1908 to for five, year, five years. There's pictures were able to be taken at that time. How did they, you know, I, I wonder if they diverted. I, I don't know. How did they drive? Are there any engineers that watch my show? Are there any hydro engineers that have laid caissons in 13 mile an hour current that is as deep as John says that it was, 20 feet deep there? I'm dying to find out because I, again, let's, you know what? Where is that video? Here we go. Hey, John, my friend. This one for you, brother. Much love. Hey, John, my friend. This one's for you, brother. Much love. There you go. That one's for you, John. You inspired me to, to get out there. I was on my rollerblades on the Bird Island Pier of the old Erie Canal. And look at them blocks, guys. You're telling me they laid case on? Especially even the foundations of the Peace Bridge. Piers. Sorry about that. So, there go your blocks, John. I did a video about this before they actually the uh, you know what come check out this video of mine where it's got that okay it's bushwhack and tartaria episode number seven i was there before on my bike all right where you at yeah there you go john now i'd like to i'm gonna i'm glad that i'm showing this video now i'll skip it later on because i'm gonna go through the pictures that i did I also got pictures on this pier, and I want to show you guys that. I still got the skills on the blades too, guys. Now what they do, and because a lot, obviously you've seen some of the damage, we're going to show more pictures of the damage from the ice, and uh, also what happens is um, sticks and twigs get lodged in them holes that you see going through from the coming out from the canal and a barge comes through on the canal side and, and pulls there's a actually a, a, a caterpillar crane that is on the barge and it clears out so they have the ability to move blocks and stuff like that along this thing now of course because the barge just sits there in, in the canal and, and um, a crane goes over cleans out all the debris but look at that I've been in I've been I passed through that straight many times on a boat going out with um, friends to ski fish and I just wanted to get out and show you guys exactly how just as inquisitive I am I mean how does that thing just stay there with look at that So I agree with you, John. How did they do that? Big block for you. Legos. Throw your fishing. Throw, okay, yeah. When you're fishing, you're gonna want to be like right there. See that? Now, also, I'd like to say, what happens when, again, like I illustrated before, when you have a break wall right here, 
number one fish like to chill here because like the little fish that come down through here or whatever you know they're the big boys like pike musky walleye we'll pick them off right here also this creates torrents you can actually see them coming off whirlpools whirlpools right torrent energy Dudes fish here all the time in the in the summer. Banging them. Look at this thing. You're telling me they they put caissons in that water? I looked up video. I I couldn't find any. Caissons in current. It was beautiful. Uh, it was meant to be today, man. Big time. your homie on his blades there you go I try to get slick here with the flip back with the 180 going backwards still got it there you go that was for you John thanks brother Okay, so now what I was going to say, let's see, he was explaining it this. Through this tunnel, under the water, and supplying the city with water. And again, did they really build this? Here we're seeing an old photo, and as usual, it looks so old. We have doors up here, really amazing. And I think this was from the old world. Me too, John. Now let's go here and show Buffalo 101 water intake. I shared this video in my community. We're gonna show a little clip. This is about the uh, the round intake carriage, the one that we use now. Pay attention and listen up. You go in, it has a center well where all the fresh water comes into, settles, very quiescent. In fact, that location where the intake is now currently is called the Emerald Channel. The reason it is is because of the clarity of the water. It's really an ideal location uh, for an intake. The first step in the treatment process is really having an ideal raw water source. In fact, this is the second intake that was installed for the city of Buffalo. The first one was installed right below the Peace Bridge, and that served for about 20 years until there was a, a pollution epidemic, actually a typhoid ep epidemic, that came down through the influence of surface water. Once this happened, the city of Buffalo realized it needed another location. And after surveying, looking at how the river flows and interacts between Lake Erie and Niagara, that location was chosen because it's the most quiescent area in the river and it's an ideal source. So once you go out there, it's actually called that Emerald Channel because the water has an emerald look to it. You can see that not only outside the facility, but also inside in that center well. Follow the red brick road to the Emerald water that's for you moon jazz bear that's what that's why i sent you that you'll know what i'm talking about so quiescent he said about three times remember i told you before about specific terms quiescent in a state or period of inactivity or dormancy he used that in referring to the state of the water in that area so therefore I do believe that they could have put caissons around that area and done that like the work that John was showing in his video definitely possible plausible there even though we don't have great construction photos John's found some good ones matter of fact ones that I can't find that I didn't find in the cursory search so I nailed it out of the park there also so quiescent water emerald green also and it's coming in and is that charged water? I'm going to get into that with my Niagara Falls video. There's a lot of stuff going on here with the waterworks. I call it riddles in the water. And boy, I'm so excited that John did that today. Unbeknownst that uh, I had to get out here and do this. So quiescent water. Or how he referred to it as quiescent. Now let's go a little bit further here. And keep in mind what I said with the emerald water. Charged water possibly. Think about water, charged water going through radial designs. 
guys underwater maybe i'll cite the dr emoto um experiments with freezing water look that up for sure so let's let's do this though and fitting with um oh what is that top top hit hmm. quiescent water energy from quiescent water okay let's come let's go look this up guys i'm gonna have hopefully you guys can help me out i need help from miwi um i want to know if i can find schematics for the ward energy pumping station and what do you think about the energy in the emerald water here guys also i don't think that they built that intake carriage in 1908 unless they're completely putting this over taking us for a long ride because in 1902 library of congress like i illustrated they have the water crib there so there is some serious gravy going on here in buffalo with the waterworks and i again i'm getting into it i think this is the one that john used what i want to show you guys though is Right here it shows a 1927 picture of the ward plant. Okay, now keep that, look at that. Look at what's going on here. Look at how all this construction, look at how deep this goes almost. What were they doing here? And it says the filtration plant was completed in 1927. Now let's go and do a little bit more research on this thing, this waterfront. Note, note how this is a... Uh, 1853 illustration and how it just like these look like it just makes it look like a crossroad no significance but well let's pull up some information that you guys can find too in a cursory search well look at how they depict it as a beautiful radial pattern in this picture in 1804 allegedly the Ellicott brothers laid out the radial street pattern yada yada don't buy it don't buy it they were brothers because they could be in two different places at one time too just like the Olmstead brothers and company and senior, in my opinion. You know, it starts to become ridiculous at a certain point. You know, 1804, beautifully laid out radio street pattern. And then you get a drawing like this, and it just looks like they make it look like, oh. And then look, here goes, I think, Jet. There may have been even a canal into these old cities. Like there are in other cities like Washington and Chicago. Even Cleveland, they all have old canals through these cities. So when I see something like that, it just sticks out as a massive anomaly to me. On top of what we're demonstrating here with this. And then I see a picture like... and we're, So, Powerhouse, Buffalo, Electric Street Railway. If this is the ward treatment plant or the porter plant like i suspect that it is there's a huge anomaly because they're telling us that in 1902 it was a coal burner and they conveniently make the porter Ave station look like a smaller than a, a house and it's ma it's massive also why i question things is because stuff like this now this is a map of the Niagara re region in night or in 1812 and right where they have the Porter Ave station it delineates earthworks guys okay something does not add up and I, I aim to find it out this is you know I don't know necessarily what I'm looking at I like to get a proper timeline and more cohesive I, I don't know necessarily the timelines don't add up you have an earthwork labeled here in 1812 meanwhile in the 1902 it's labeled as a Port Raff station with a couple little piers here it, it doesn't it doesn't add up and I hope I'm making some cohesive sense here they might have been taking out the electric line here and then look at see look at that big ass big old excuse me 
truss there. They can move. If they're on rails, guys, they can move heavy equipment with that. Heavy blocks, too. Look at that. A-frame almost looks like what Ed Leeds Scalman had in um, Coral, Coral Castle down in Florida. Some anomalies, guys. Very, very crazy anomalies. And the radial street pattern, I think, was lined up with the, the sunset in the Buffalo. Here we go. Yeah, this is another article I found. This might have been the one that John used. Here goes an anomaly, too. So on February 3rd, 1916, of course, uh, uh, February 3rd, 1916, large new pumping station of the city of Buffalo. You know, um, I will read this while I go over my pictures. Here we are. Broderick Park, Black Rock Ferry. Check it. Wanted some more gravy on Black Rock Ferry. This rock was blown up and destroyed in 1825. Go back to my YouTube channel. Community. Watch this video right here. Talks about that. And I have some serious questions on this mainstream video also. Let's go. So I'm going to read that article while I go through my boots on the ground for you. And when I get to the video that I've already been on, we'll pass it. Okay, so the large new pump, look at the, I went up there and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a fence there. Oh, well, and I was in my, on my rollerblades too, and you know the berserk got through there. Large new pumping station of the city of Buffalo which has been underway for several years at Porter Ave, is now practically complete and is in service. The Buffalo Common Council has adopted the name Colonel Francis G. Ward Pumping Station for this plant in place of the old common and unofficial designation of the Porter Ave Station. And we've seen that, 1902 map. This has been done to honor the memory of Colonel Ward, whose recent death ended 20 years of conspicuous, conspicuous service as Chief of the Bureau of Water and Commissioner of Public Works. Hmm, that would be an interesting person to look up. Million Dollar Man, huh? Note the dates, guys. I mean, seriously, note the dates all the time. It's, unbelie it's literally unbelievable. They stick out all the time. There goes your boy. Oh, was that? Oh, that was the video for John, yeah. Buffalo Waterworks were started in 1849 by a private company. The city purchased the plant in 1868 when the city had a population of 100,000 and a daily consumption of 4 million gallons. Then all water was pumped from Niagara River by a 4 million gallon Cornish Bull engine made in 1851 by I.P. Morris of Philadelphia and a 6 million gallon beam engine made by Shepherd Ironworks of Buffalo, 1866. Wow. The supply was much contaminated with sewage. Hmm. In that current, sewage, I just don't get it. As the city grew, the pipes were extended, additional uh, pumps were erected, and haphazard additions were made to the station building. Excuse me. As the city grew, the pipes were extended, additional pipes, additional pumps were erected, and haphazard additions were made to the station building to house them. Haphazard. Did you see those, those wheels? Here you go. I'll keep on reading. The first improvement under the city administration was the construction of a new intake in the center of Niagara River. Placed there on old theory that running water purified itself. Hmm. I tend to agree with that theory. Uh, 
like replaced purified itself in the springtime the pumps were choked with uh, slush ice from the beginning of Colonel Ward's connection with the city water department an intake in Emerald Channel and a duplicate pumping station at the foot of Porter Ave were advocated the plans were examined recommended by experts several times but nothing was done up to the time when he became commissioner of public works in 1907 a contract was let for the con for the construction of a new intake tunnel and intake from Emerald Channel 1907 oh so 1907 they're saying again You got earthwork, 1812. Like, am, am I missing something here, guys? See, 1812, earthwork. Also note this. You see the X? X marks the spot, guys. Let's do this right quick. Note the X in Fort Erie. Okay. I'm telling you, this was a star for, for before here in Buffalo. Because, okay, note that X in... Note the X in Fort Erie. Okay. Note Fort Erie right here. Old Fort Erie. Note, Star Fort. Star Mound, if you will. Okay. Whatever you, whatever made these, whatever, it's there. It's mounded. Now, let's get back up in the air. That star I'm saying is this bad boy right here. And then you have another one here. Buffalo. Right where the earthworks are. Right where I believe. You know what? Let's do that. Don't really need this one anymore, I don't believe. So I'll show you where to find this stuff. Now, Star Fort, guys. Star. Star Fort. That is the remnants of this, I believe. Buffalo was great. It, it, I can't believe this nuts. Star Fort, guys. Okay. Another Buffalo map, 1880. Star. Okay, this, and they're hiding it with industry buildings. Probably taking it down and mining it, I believe. It was a big one, too. So we got that going on too here in Buffalo. Back to Reading. In 1909, a contract was let for a superstructure, but the completion of the building was delayed because unfortunate accident or unfortunate accident by which the roof trussels fell. Emerald Channel. Yeah, what, see, so that's what ice does, guys, on, on the uh, shore of Lake Erie. No joke. It's a shallow lake. It picks up really fast because it's shallow. There you go. Emerald Channel. Follow the red brick road. Riddles in the water. General design of the station. The building is a brick with uh, terracotta trimmings. 
it is fireproof throughout. The general appearance is shown in figure one. That's what I showed you before. Yeah, look, it's a beautiful area. Buffalo gets a bad rap for a reason I think that is uh, detrimental to the main narrative. They don't want you to know how beautiful it was here. So yeah, I read most of that article, and this is one that I read. Look at that picture. Look at this picture, guys. So allegedly this would be newly built, but what about what's going on here then? So this said this it was built. Large new station. Let's go off the date, 1916. Well, what's going on? Here, in 1927. Like I just, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Definitely says that's the Colonel Francis Ward pumping station. See? Certainly anomalous, and then you got 1853 illustration. Looking like a dirt road crossroad. Meanwhile, radial street pattern design. 1804 from Ellicott Brothers. Beautiful street radio pattern. Beautiful. And again, let's lay down what that is. Radio. Let's go away. Radio grid. Radio grid is a grid iron plan on steroids. Strictly geometric, regardless of existing topography, and in some cases changes the topography to better match the geometry. If anybody could find how Ellicott did that in 1804, come find me on MeWe. And again, what are we looking at here, guys? How do they how do they drive? How did how did they sink this uh, pier? Or this intake carriage that John did today in the Buffalo River at the time that they said, I don't buy it. And the dates obviously don't match up. I think I just proved that here. And look at this stuff. Obviously drilling to separate, I think, for mining. But look at this thing. What was going on? Sod? Was that sod? I mean, you got 19-foot flywheels or whatever, how big they were. Saws were capable, too. Kind of reminded me of, you know, like I said, the stone of the pregnant lady or the unfinished obelisk, but I think it's it's definitely concrete. We've seen rebar. Frank Lloyd Wright uh, boathouse, that is. Frank Lloyd Wright building right there. Ugly. Whoever that dude was. Famous architect, I know. I'm just kind of being tongue-in-cheek here with the constructs that we think certain... Historical figures were possibly UAP ladder. Very cool. I would have kept going, but I had my blades on. So yeah, there's con well, this looks like concrete, yeah. But you know, I had the blocks underneath there. Oh yeah, there goes a the rebar. Yeah, what are we looking at here, guys? Lego blocks. Getting tossed by, the, by nature. There's nothing man can make that nature just can't sneeze and... See you later. Been there before. Did a video there. Different levels of construction, different construction methods. Are they different cultures? Who knows? I've said before, there's not a cornerstone here in Buffalo that's prior to 1812 because of the War of 1812. What are the old foundations then, though? And a uh, beautiful picture. Fitting. There go those things that they were driving out in front of the porter 
aft station that I got footage of for you. Coming down to just under an hour here. Not bad. Kind of a long one today, but sorry about that. But I hope you like it. And this is my drive back. Look at these buildings. This is along, obviously, Niagara Street and um, Auburn. There you go. Look at the different levels of different construction styles. I've illustrated before, Brian Forrester would say, that indicates different cultures. So, what I also want to do is ask you guys to come over to MeWe, my channel, okay, or our website. Created by Campbell of Autodidactic. We have our mods, our myself, Campbell, obviously, OG, Kaloum, and Muddy May is in our web, or she will help you out with questions as well. So will any of the other moderators. So please come here, subscribe, and help us out. We really appreciate that. And let's network the realm. I'm trying to find. schematic patterns of schematics floor plans of the Colonel Ward pumping station I found them before can't find them again effectively what it shows is that there's a, a, a tunnel going this way to the Massachusetts Ave pumping station is along with the one that we know comes out to here so I can't find any gravy or any information on the tunnel that connects this one with this one the, the Massachusetts Ave one so that's why we got to network the realm here at MeWe and I would appreciate if y'all will come over here you have to have a user account set up on MeWe and you have to apply to the group please be professional please be respectful if you have any questions ask me if you post any videos a brief description of the video is required if it's not I'm going to delete it off there okay be professional if anybody has any problems or questions uh, I'd like to get to handle it by you know between yourselves and be professional about it but please approach me or Kaluma or, or Campbell or Muddy May so again this is Dustin Kirby it's Ben Bushwhack and Tartaria with Berserker Bear I will catch you on the next one all right take care